Welcome back to the program. Pedigree cattle. We've just had the bull sales for the beef breeds. Performance recording, Wayne, where are we at? Because it is an evolving system. Yes, Robin, it just gets stronger and stronger. Um, as we, as we um, gather more data on these animals, we come up with bulls such as Timania Infinity 379, who is in the top 14, uh, top 20% for 14 traits of the 17 traits recorded, which is an outstanding achievement. The bull has been the highest selling bull in New Zealand, highest selling bull in Australia last year, I'm talking AI as in for art yeah, an artificial yeah. insemination. And he's also now making his American debut. So we're really looking All without this. leaving home. All without leaving home. He still lives here in Canterbury. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, that, that, the, these breeding values, that's a huge range now of different measurements and different weights and whatever. Yes, there's 17 traits recorded in, um, within breed plan for beef cattle, uh, starting with a, a carving ease figure, which is a a uh, record of how the daughters um, have carved, or the, or the well-known, um, or the known individuals within close up in the pedigree. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a figure that it gives you an idea that but it's going to be an easy birth. The, you're suggesting that the males throw the size of calf, or in my case, babies, and, and your mind are all heavy. I have uh, my head cut off, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it certainly is. There's there's a very strong trend that the performance backs the. Um, it backs the performance, it really does. Mm. Mm. So that, yes, okay, so that, that's the birth weights, but yep. then you go into growth weights? Well, no, then you, the other important thing combined with your carving ease and your gestation length, because we've now got bulls that are up to plus 10 days negative gestation, which means they'll be born, um, well, the bull will only have 50%, so they could be born five days earlier than a normal gestation period. So slightly premature, so they'll be small. Slightly, well, scarcely premature, just early. <laughs> <laughs> then you've got your, your actual calf weight, the weight of calf. So if you're thereabouts, either side of breed average, ideal. It does, it does wean out these bulls that are going to leave these thumping big calves that there are going to be problems with. That's what I was referring to a moment for sure, ago. For sure. Yep. Yeah. Then your growth rates, we've, got to, we've still got to have these um, animals to grow quickly. So you want the moderate birth weight, but the fast growth to 200 days. That's a very important figure. Then you want to get, that's if you're, particularly for those in the calf market, they want to present the best product possible. Then you go to your 400 days where you've got, um, they're, well, they're just a bit over a year old. So that's for the, for the yearling job. And then on to 600 days when they're just under two years of age. Um, so that's an all very important within the breed to see where each animal's placed. And go back to infinity again, top 20% for those three traits. You know, sensational. So how are all these recorded? I mean, obviously, the, the, weight, the growth weights is easy, apart from the fact that you've got to weigh them with, at birth, which is a trick. Yes, definitely, and there's a lot... Um, pedigree Bird has put a lot of effort into, into supplying data for breed plan to, to supply this information. And obviously, as far as birth weights are concerned and the size and all that sort of stuff, I mean, it must be very, very time consuming and, and has to be accurate. Accurate and quite expensive if you were to take your, your hours invested um, into account, but that's what they do. From here on out, what else can we expect? Because you have things like scrotum size and all sorts of things. Absolutely. Scrotal is actually one of the easiest things to measure. Put a bull up a race, put a tape measure around his testicles, and you come up with a, with a centimetreage. Um, depending on the age, um, probably top end, 45 centimetres, down in the low 30s, not big enough. The other thing that comes with, which is a bonus with scrotal size, if you keep selecting for scrotal size, is that you find that the daughters that are bred from those bulls with high scrotal size reach puberty earlier. So it's a double whammy. You've not only got the fertility from the ability to cover more cows, you've got then got the daughters coming along that reach puberty early. And that's how you make money out of beef cattle, is have them, as soon as they're exposed to the bull, taking the bull in calf, you're in business. Right. We're talking pedigree cattle here? Only pedigree at this stage because the, um, it's a little bit hard to, to put all this together in a commercial herd, although some people are um, angling that way. Is it breed specific? That was a hard word for me to get out today. <laughs> breed specific. Breed plan is breed specific at this point in time. Um, but there is a, um, they, I know they are working on interbreed 
EBVs. In my opinion, it would have to be on the maternal su side, such as Herefords, uh, Shorthorns, um, Angus, the maternal breeds mm -hmm. that, that breed the, the, the traditional herds. British breeds. Correct. And then I think you'd need a, a terminal index for the for the terminal size, such as the Simmentals and the Charolais, Limousins. Because it's an average of the of the breed, there would be a tendency for people who didn't have very good performance figures not to put them in. So how is that policed? That's a curly one, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you thinking. Well, if you're, not you putting, if you're not putting data and you're not getting a read on where you're going, if you don't measure it, how do you know where you're going? Hmm. And um, I think that for those that were thinking that a few years ago, they're now realising that they're either having, going to have to really get in behind the performance um, and it all comes down, I guess, if you're, if you're the below the average line of a, of a breed, whether it be Shorthorn, Angus or Hereford, you obviously, that's where your culling is going to come in. Correct, but in saying that, you won't be below the average for the 17 traits recorded. It's just a matter of where you put your emphasis. Like some people that have got high birth weights will have very good growth rates, because unfortunately the two tend to go hand in hand. It's a matter of looking for what they call the curve benders, in their, in their case where they want to maintain their growth and decrease their birth weight. And there are, there are bulls out there that, that can do that. And that's exactly what the buyers are looking for. They'll know what traits they're wanting to bring into their herd. Exactly, yeah. Wayne, thank you, because it is a very complicated sort of a scenario. We could talk for quite a while on it, Rob, because um, we didn't touch on the carcass and other things that come through, and that's, that's a very strong part of it too. Well, you're just going to have to come back again, Wayne <laughs> McLaren. Thank you very much, Adele.